Hello everybody and also welcome to the channel of Eclectic Chiesa. If this is not your first time of being here, I thank you so much for coming back. Truly, I always appreciate it when you guys return. However, if this is your first time of being here, then I so heartily welcome you as well. I actually urge you to stick around because there's always a lot of fun over here. Or either way, very, very interesting. So please don't go. I promise you, it will be good. My name is Vanessa Danza Raja Chewa and today I'll be talking to you about the most important day of Ghana, the Independence Day, the biggest day that took place on the 6th of March 1957 and of course all the events that led up to this big day so if you like this type of video just comment in the comments box below let me know what you thought let me know what you think and i really like to know your opinions on this one you can like this video you can share it you can give this thumbs up and show some love and until then you can just enjoy it i'll see you in a bit bye once upon a time well about 60 years ago to be exact a great nation called ghana gained its independence on the 6th of march 1957 now most of us know about this great event, but I'm pretty sure that not all of you know about some of the events that led up to this great day. So with that, your girl got you covered, sit down and relax, and allow me to take you way back in time. A little disclaimer though, as we all know, the information that is about to be shared is very well researched and comes from accredited sources, scholarly books, and articles. It was as important to me as it is to you to keep this information highly accurate. So if in any case you would like to have a better insight, just click on the link below and it will direct you straight to the article and its list of sources. All right, now I'm done, let's get started. Okay, so even though there was a whole lot of back and forth going on about our independence, there are five key dates that one should remember because they're kind of important. This is gonna go chronological, so just flow with me on this one. Okay, so first, date number one, September 18, 1956. This was a day that the official date of independence of the Gold Coast was announced to the public. Date number two, between the 12th and the 14th of November 1956. On these days, the newly formed constitution was approved along with its nation's renewed name Ghana, after long debate of the Legislative Assembly. Date number three, the 7th of February 1957, is the day the Independence Act received royal assent, which basically means when a country's constitutional monarch formally approves an act of that nation's parliament. Date number four, the 22nd of February, 1957. This is the day the Independence Act received a long-awaited signature by Her Majesty, the Queen of England. And then the nation waited, along with all the other African countries, for the infamous date number five, the historical formal day of independence which was the 6th of March, 1957, the date we all remember today. Now that we have gotten those hardcore days out of the way, there is still so much more to say about our beloved Ghana. So much history, but I won't make this too extensive, so just allow me to briefly address the six basics, or shall I say, the six seriously must-know stuff about our awesome country and its independence. So here it is for those who knew and forgot, and for those who never knew it at all. All right, let's go. Must-know fact number one. The Big Six. I could not be prouder of the iconic Big Six that played such a tremendous role in this historical event. Undoubtedly, there have been many contradictive speculations as to their actual contributions to this event. However, as they may lay in perfect peace today, we cannot go about our merry way without giving credit where credit is due. We ought to remember, acknowledge, appreciate, and truly celebrate their actions, which not only had an impact on our awesome country we call Ghana today, but also on all the other African countries. The big six were Dr. Ebenezer Aku Ajay, Dr. Edward Akufo Ado, Dr. Joseph Bwache Dankwa, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Mr. Emmanuel Obetsebi Lamte, and Mr. William Ofori Atta. As we all know, these six men were the leaders and key members of the organization that emerged and got inaugurated at South Pond on August 4, 1947, and was named United Gold Coast Convention, or also known as UGCC. The UGCC, which was the first political party, was of high relevance because it was an organization or political party that was advocating for self-governance. The driving force to gain independence was based on the ideology self-government within the shortest possible time. However, this ideology did not sit well with Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, which led him to break away from the UGCC to form a new political party called Convention's People's Party, also known as CPP, which was officially born on the 12th of June, 1949, with its leader, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. This political party was driven to gain independence with the following ideology, 
self-government right now. And this political party, CPP, was also the first ruling party after Ghana gained independence. So even though independence was declared on the 6th of March 1957, with Dr. Kwame Nkrumah as Prime Minister, Ghana became an official republic with Dr. Nkrumah as President on the 1st of July 1960. Must know fact number two, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and Pan-Africanism Movement. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was believed to have truly fathered the Pan-Africanism Movement. Hence, our beloved country became the face of Pan-Africanism when Ghana became the first Sub-Saharan African country to gain independence in 1957. You see, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was of the opinion that as Africa was divided in 1884-1885 at the Berlin Conference, also known as the Scramble for Africa or Rape of Africa, that we simply cannot accept visions imposed upon us by our enemies. Africa is one, hence we must unify her. Some may ask, what is Pan-Africanism? Well, allow me to explain. Pan-Africanism is a total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. It is a movement that encourages solidarity and emancipation of all African countries. It is a movement that strives for the riches and resources of the continent to be used for its own people. It is a movement that strives for intellectual, economic, and political cooperation of all the African countries. It is a movement that strives for a unified continent with a socialist system. In other words, this movement is anti-colonialism, hence anti-capitalism. Anti-capitalism equals socialism. See, an economy can only have one of these two output options. Profit and wealth for a few, capitalism, or profit and wealth for everybody, socialism. Africa can only be united by socialism. Pan-Africanists believe that not only do all Africans share the same history, but they also share the same destiny, no matter your current location. In 1945, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah went to London to study economics and law, and that was also the very same year he helped organize the 5th Pan-African Congress, which took place in Charlton Town Hall in Manchester from the 15th till 21st of October 1945. The Pan-African movement also has a flag, which is composed of three colors. The color red stands for the blood of all African people that connects us all, whether they live on the continent of Africa or in diaspora. Black refers to the color of the skin, and green stands for the rich green lands of Africa. Must know fact number three, transition from Gold Coast to Ghana. After we gained notification that the request of independence was granted, it became a pressing issue to change the name of Gold Coast to something more meaningful. See the name Gold Coast dates back as early as 1471. So even though Ghana was a British colony, the name actually originated when the Portuguese were the first Europeans to have stepped foot on our premises to make their presence known through trade. Where that name came from is self-explanatory. Our land possesses so much gold, and this was economically very beneficial. And that is how we inherited the name. However, sticking to that name was no option because this would actually be rather derogatory. It's like giving the country Sierra Leone the name Diamonds, simply because it has an excess of it. Naming a country according to its excess in bare minerals reflects the fact that there may be a lack of love for the people itself, hence lack of love for the nation, and therefore only love for the economic prospects of the state. So keeping the name will be supporting capitalism, where it is rather socialism that should be embraced. So Dr. Kwame Nkrumah changed the name into Ghana. This name change was approved on the 12th of November, 1956. So just to be clear, it is a Gold Coast that gained independence. However, because the name change was legally granted in November 1956 and documented as such prior to the formal day of independence, we may refer to this day as Ghana Independence Day. Must know fact number four, Ghana flag. The Ghana flag was designed in 1957 by a lady called Mrs. Theodosia Salome Oko and was first and officially hoisted on Independence Day, 6th of March, 1957. Now, believe it or not, our flag did undergo some changes. See, from 1st January 1964, the yellow stripe in the middle was replaced by a white stripe to resemble the political party CPP, which was a ruling party at the time. However, the original flag with its original colors was reinstated on the 28th of February, 1966. Now, the color red stands for remembrance of the bloodshed that occurred in the long struggle to get to independence. The color gold, and not yellow, stands for the riches that our country is blessed with. Ghana was called the Gokos for a reason. 
And green stands for the enormous green lands, forests, and rich vegetation our land is blessed with. Now finally, the five-pointed black star that lies in a gold horizontal stripe is believed to have been borrowed from the flag of Marcus Garvey's shipping line, founded in June 1919, which carried a black star. See, the reason why it was important enough to borrow this star was because it was a shipping line that brought the African colonists back to Africa. It symbolizes the collective emancipation of Africa and its strong unity in the fight against colonialism. Our flag is the first flag to have adopted the Pan-Africanism colors. Must know fact number five, national anthem. It is so beautiful and empowering when we come together as a nation to support our black stars during a football match. And then it's time for the national anthem and then it gets embarrassing. I'm sure that there are a lot of people like myself who know the first line or two and then it pretty much goes blank from there. Now, even though only one stanza is sung when opening a football match, the current National Pledge is actually composed of three stanzas. The lyrics of the National Pledge also change along the way. See, when Ghana gained independence in 1957, the original National Pledge was composed by Mr. Philip Gable in 1957. However, after the coup d'etat on the 24th of February, 1966, the overthrow of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the lyrics was adjusted. A student back in those days, of course, named Michael Kwame Bodzo, supposedly wrote the lyrics of God Bless Our Homeland Ghana when he was in the framework of a national competition. And these lyrics have been used ever since the 1970s. Even though the now Dr. Michael Kwame Bodzo has claimed to be the original author of the lyrics, the government has not yet acknowledged this fact yet, which is why there's no official record to be found yet on this matter. Must know fact number six, Ghana currency. Now for the last throwback down memory lane, we will discuss our currency. See, Ghana has not always been used in the city. When current Ghana was colonized and still under the British rule, the British West African pounds, shillings, and pence were used. However, when Ghana gained its independence in 1957, a new monetary currency needed to be implemented. After all, we are independent now. So then came the Ghanaian pounds, pence, and shillings. These were used from 1958 till 1965. And then after 1965, the government of Ghana decided to leave the British monetary system altogether. And that is how the CD notes and the Pesos coins came to life. Now the word CD actually means cowrie shells, sea snails in the Akan language. These cowrie shells were actually used as money in our country way back in the days. And we have finally reached the end of the six must know facts about the independence of Ghana. People sometimes ask what the point is of knowing your past. But here's the thing though. You gotta know your past to know where you are going, to know where you are headed, and to truly appreciate the present and embrace the future. Enjoy this day of celebration. I know everybody has an opinion when it comes to the current state of affairs of government. However, for just today, I would humbly ask you to set aside any differences and animosity for just today, and let us come together as one, just the way they did exactly 60 years ago. Today is not about analyzing the present, but it's about reminiscing and celebrating a historic event our history, yours and mine. It's been a long time coming, but our forefathers believed that the change was going to come sooner or later. And it did. It surely did. Well, it seems as though we have reached the end of this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned quite a bit. This video actually comes with an article I wrote about Independence Day. So if you'd like to have a better insight on the matter, you can just click on the link below and it will redirect you straight to the article. Until then, you can just take care of yourselves, be kind to one another, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and do enjoy Independence Day. Bye.